everybody, Sarah here. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. When talking about going deeper in our relationship with the Lord, we cannot do that without talking about fasting. And the Lord has really been dealing with me about fasting. Y'all are really just basically getting everything the Lord's been showing me in my personal life over the last few months, all the things he's been convicting me of and the ways he's been growing me in these areas. So there you have it. <laughs> but the Lord's really been dealing with me about my fasting over the last few months. But my fasting journey has been kind of interesting. Um, when I was in college, I would fast um, basically whenever my church would fast, but I never fasted outside of that. Honestly, because I didn't understand the purpose of fasting or the importance of it. So um, when I graduated, I actually found out that I have hypoglycemia. For those of you that don't know what that is, um, basically at any given time, my blood sugar can just randomly drop. And with that being said, I need to eat just to ensure that my blood sugar stays where it needs to be. Otherwise, I can pass out and that's almost happened quite a few times. <laughs> and obviously that can just be a real situation and ain't nobody got time for that. So back in 2014, my church did a fast and I was accountable to my pastor and I let him know that I'm, I have hypoglycemia and I just don't feel comfortable fast not eating because I don't want my blood sugar to drop. So he just told me just to kind of eat lightly, you know, instead of eating a full breakfast, just eat some toast. So that's what I did. Um, and at the end of the fast, I found out that my uncle, who is a diabetic, did the full fast. And God convicted me so much. If my uncle, who's a diabetic, can go without food and he can still function and live and God brought him through it and was faithful and kept him, why wouldn't he do the same thing for me? You know, that God really used that to convict me. So um, I spoke with my mentors and, you know, prayed and all that good stuff. And I did a beginning of the year fast in 2015 and God was faithful. He kept me. My blood sugar never dropped. And it was just such a beautiful time with the Lord that I had never experienced before. So at that, from that point on, I just incorporated fasting into a regular part of my life. And to be honest, me not fasting due to my hypoglycemia was really just me lacking faith, me letting fear rule me more than faith would rule me. Because I, again, I didn't think that God would actually keep me, that he would you know, keep my blood sugar regulated to where it needed to be and that he would be faithful. And I do understand that there are some people that have you know, other illnesses and conditions and stuff and everybody's situation is different. So you might be taking medicine where you have to um, eat with it and, or you could you know, have some issues. So I understand everybody's situation is different, but you have to follow your doctor's orders. But for me, it was more so of me being ruled by fear versus me actually saying, God, I trust that you're going to keep me and, you know, walking in that. So once I started working um, at the end of 2015, again, I started letting fear uh, rule me instead of faith because I was afraid to fast, to be honest, because, you know, I would be exerting more energy than I normally would have been in the wilderness and you know, I'm smelling food all day, I'm around people, and any excuse that I could think of to not fast, basically, that's what I was doing. And I went about two weeks when I first started working and I didn't fast. And God quickly <laughs> grabbed a hold of me and basically it was just like, so you don't trust me anymore? You don't think that I can still keep you now that you're working? So needless to say, I quickly repented and got back on track with fasting and started fasting back again. Fast forward to... 2017 and I find myself honestly just kind of going through the motions you know I was still fasting but I wasn't really enjoying them like I used to wasn't really getting anything out of them I was getting headaches a lot more and I was um, just really focusing on the end of the fast so I could go eat I wasn't fasting because I longed for God and I wanted to devote you know intentional time to pray about something particular but I was fasting going through the motions I was fasting because I was supposed to I was fasting out of routine and because of that I was receiving no benefits from the fasting. I wasn't drawing closer to the Lord because my motives were wrong and unbiblical. Because, you know, in Matthew 6, Jesus says that when you fast, indicating that he expects us as believers to fast. And in Matthew uh, 9, he also indicates that he expects us as believers to fast once he ascends to heaven. So we know, you know, that we're supposed to fast and a lot of times you can do things out of routine, out of obligation or because we're supposed to and end up going through the motions and, and that's exactly what I had done and this can go for things other than fasting a lot of us do this with prayer with going to church with reading the Bible with doing all these other spiritual things but not actually being in tune with the spirit when we're doing it and there's no way that you can actually expect to go deeper in your walk with the Lord 
by going through the motions and just doing something because you're supposed to, by just doing a routine. So the main thing that the Lord really showed me in reference to this is that there needs to be a spiritual purpose every single time that you fast. And that's um, the first point that I'm going to talk about in this video. The main thing that the Lord showed me is that we need to have a spiritual purpose every single time that we fast. Otherwise, you're really just starving yourself. The thing is, you need to understand why you're doing what you're doing. Like I said, the main reason I uh, found myself going through the motions is because I didn't have a a, per, a spiritual purpose behind my fasting and because of that I didn't have any focused prayers and no scriptures memorized during that time I'm supposed to be devoted you know have devoted intentional time with the Lord so some of the spiritual purposes that I found in scripture were to seek God's guidance seeking deliverance or protection expressing repentance and returning to God um, expressing concern for the work of God ministering to the needs of others um, overcoming temptation and dedicating yourself to God and just expressing yourself in worship. And of course, your um, your purpose of for fasting may vary from time to time. For two months, it might be this focus over here. And for the next two months, it might be something different. But the point is to have a spiritual purpose of why you're fasting. Like, why are you fasting? Again, why are you doing what you're doing? And it needs to be spiritual purpose. Don't fast to lose weight. <laughs> like, don't fast to try to appear more spiritual than other people. Jesus rebuked the Pharisees for that very thing, right? So once you identify what your spiritual purpose is, focus your prayers on whatever that is. Because we have to remember that though you can pray without fasting, you cannot, biblically speaking, fast without praying. Almost every scripture that I referenced um, with those spiritual purposes, they were all tied with fasting and prayer. So every time those hunger pains are hitting me when I'm fasting, I've just learned to pray and you know, just got more than I want food. God, I want you. Got more than I want food. I want you to deliver me. More than I want food. God, I just want you. God, I want you to draw me closer to you. God, help me with this area. And then just apply the word of God to that. Like your word says this, God. Your word says that. And I believe you, God, that you're going to do that in me as I draw close to you. And you know, fasting is probably the most abandoned spiritual um, discipline because nobody wants to go without food or TV or social media or whatever, you know, you would be giving up. And I love what John Piper says. He says that fasting is going without something to show that Christ is more valuable than what you are going without. And that's the interesting thing about fasting is that fasting really exposes your heart. And that's the second thing that I want to look at. The thing is fasting reveals the mastery that food and TV and social media and all these other things has over us. If we're unwilling to go an extended period of time without these things to devote to time with the Lord, then that starts to show that those things have become idols for us. Because the thing is, fasting is denying your flesh of your immediate wants. Because we can't say that we want to go deeper in our walk with the Lord and then refuse to give up anything to focus on Him wholeheartedly, to, to unplug from the things that are distracting us from Him, the things that we delight in more than we delight in Him. Because the thing is, do we see God as more valuable than what we're giving up? You know, do we want him more? Because the thing is, we can't focus so much on what we're giving up or what we're missing, but we need to focus on what we're gaining, and that's more of Jesus. So tell me in the comment sections below, what is God saying to you through this video? You know, what did you learn? Is God calling you to begin fasting or to examine your heart regarding your fasting? Let me know in the comment sections below. Because, you know, my goal with these videos is not to entertain you guys, but I really want you guys to actually learn and get something from these videos and for it to add value to your life and to draw you closer to the Lord. So please have that in mind when you watch my videos, Joe's videos, Jackie Hill Perry, anybody that has these types of faith-based videos, make sure that you're actually getting something from them. So again, let's talk in the comment sections below. Make sure that you like this video, that you share this video with somebody that would be blessed by it, and that you subscribe for more videos every single Wednesday. Grace and peace.